Welcome to Impact Duty. I'm your host, Manisha Dadlani Kriplani, bringing you empowering stories of friends and people I admire. Their voices have given me joy and the momentum to share their stories with you. Ruthie Diora is an entrepreneur, coach, and social media content creator. After graduating from Cambridge and the London School of Economics, she founded a luxury apparel brand with its flagship store in New Delhi. Karma had different plans for Riddhi and she got certified as a parenting expert and life coach and founded her company, Easy Parenting Hub. Riddhi has impacted over 300,000 parents across different social media platforms and has recently launched her podcast on parenting called The Powerful Parent Podcast by Riddhi. She has also been a panel speaker for several international summits along with conducting hundreds Hi, of workshops. Welcome to Impact UT. I'm so happy you're here with me today. I've been looking forward to our conversation because you've made huge strides in being a parenting blogger, a a parenting coach, and an expert, and you've amassed quite an amount of knowledge. So, Vidhi, how did this journey begin for you? Yes, thank you so much, Manisha, for having me on your show. And I've been listening to a lot of episodes, and you're doing some fantastic work. I just love what you're doing. And... uh, for me, actually, I had not planned any of this. So when I became a mother for the first time, like most mothers, you know, I went through a huge phase, like a brief phase of parenting mess. And uh, that's when I realized that, you know, parenting is a skill and we all need to learn it. It might come naturally to some of us, but right. I feel that, you know, for some of us, we really need to learn how to do it right. And even for those who feel that they're doing it right, learning is a huge advantage, gives you an edge because now you're like more sorted, you're more, you have more clarity about what you're doing and you have realistic expectations, I feel. So when I went through that whole mess myself, it was a very uh, low period in my life. I was like uh, at a very low life condition, I would say. I had everything on the outside, but on the inside, I was very empty. Like, you know, I just felt that I was losing control and my emotions mm-hmm. were taking control of my life. So that's when I realized that I had to do something to change this and that it could not be like this forever. And that's when I started my journey of learning. And I registered myself and I surrendered myself under a few mentors. And just in wow. a few weeks, I could see a huge transition. I could see a huge transformation And even though my child was same, I was the same mother, same husband, same environment. My experience as a mother was completely different. So I think uh, learning about parenting really changed everything for me. And when it started to change for me, I had this very strong intuitive feeling that, you know, I should help other mothers. Because I felt, you know, if somebody like me who's been pretty much blessed with everything that I could ask for was going through such a mess, I just felt that, you know, I'm sure there are others like me who are going through this. And now Mm -hmm. that, you know, I can see this become better for myself. I just felt that it was my responsibility to start helping at least one mother. But of course, it was not so easy because I had so many resistances. I'm a very shy person and I just didn't know how to start, where to start. And that's when my... I spoke to my husband and I told him that, you know, this is something that I really want to do. And this idea was actually inspired by a Buddhist meeting that I was attending. And the topic of the meeting was the importance of sharing your experience with others. And throughout that meeting, no, I just kept thinking that, you know, I have to share what's working with me. And I felt like I'm very selfish that I'm keeping Mm -hmm. all of this to myself and I'm not using it to help other mothers. So I come back from that Buddhist meeting and I sit with my husband and we were having tea and I tell him that, you know, this is something I really want to do. I want to share what is helping me with other mothers. I just don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So he's a marketing guy and he told me that you should definitely be on Instagram if you're actually wanting to help mothers because that's where they're mostly hanging out. And I was like, you know, being on Instagram was just not my thing. You know, I was like, this is just not me. I cannot be an influencer because I'm a very shy, introverted kind of person. I didn't have any like uh, presence on social media. I had social media accounts, but they were all private. Even my albums on Facebook, everything was very private. So he was like, okay, let's just do this. Let's turn this into a bet. And we'll open your account for just one night. 
And if you get more than 500 followers the next day, we'll keep it open. And if you wow. don't get that, we'll close it. So I was so sure that I'm not going to win this bet. So I was like, okay, let's do it. And right. just before going to sleep, I changed the name of the Instagram handle. And that the name was also, you know, it came from my husband. He said, let's name it Mom on Skates. Because if we keep it as your name, they'll not know that there is content on parenting. So even right. in my private profile, I was just sharing, you know, my experience with my son. And that's the reason why I'd actually created an Instagram profile to document right. my journey with my son. So we just renamed it. And, you know, I think it was 9, 30, 10 in the evening. And I just went to sleep. And next day in the morning when I woke up, I had some 800 plus uh, followers and 2000 plus notifications. So a lot of mothers had responded and they told me that, you know, they were going through the same thing and they spoke about how they were handling their situation. They also gave me, gave me ideas that, you know, you can do this instead. This might work for you. So that right. was a huge validation for me that people really need this information. And of right. course, you know, I felt a lot more confident because I felt that, okay, mothers are responding to whatever little that I'm sharing. So that's how it started. And then I just continued sharing. And it was just out of pure passion that I was doing this. There was no intent to start a company or to get certified as a coach. I was just there like as a regular mother sharing mm -hmm. whatever was working for me. And I love to read and I love to uh, watch videos on parenting. So I was constantly learning and I was constantly sharing what was working for me. And I was right. also sharing what was not working for me. So I was sharing both that this is working, wow. this is not working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that's and when COVID happened, mothers really uh, started asking me that you know I should do parenting workshops because that's when I went full out, you know, because there was so much time that I had. So right. I've been creating content for almost six and a half years now. But during COVID, I started creating videos, which I was not creating previously. So I started creating videos, and then mothers were like, you know, we want parenting workshops. So that's when I got certified as a parenting expert. I started doing workshops and then one thing led to the other. Then I did workshop for corporates and then I eventually launched my own digital school for parents. So that's how it started. I feel that God planned it for me and mothers planned it for me in a way because they constantly uh, put their trust in me and they really right. encouraged me to do it. And I want to take some credit for saying yes to everything that was asked for. Mm -hmm. so whatever Definitely. they asked for, I just kept saying yes. I didn't say no. I didn't say that, you know, I'll not do a parenting workshop because I'm not certified. I made sure that I got certified and I did those workshops for them. So it was uh, nice. Nothing was planned. I think it was my parenting mess. And uh, that got converted into a parenting uh, coaching uh, business eventually. But That's I excellent. love what I do. It's very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that, you know, God has put me on this path. Definitely. Because from what I read about your background, um, you had a background in, uh, you were, you had launched your own um, design uh, studio, yes. I believe, before you had um, your child. And uh, so this was really just an organic uh, development uh, that you chanced yes. upon. What a beautiful journey. And you mentioned something, uh, a name, Mom on Skates. Why and where did the skates part come in? So it was actually uh, this whole name, I'll give complete credit to my husband because it was completely his idea. Uh -huh. So he, you know, you can call it Mom on Skates because mothers are doing so many things. At the same time, it almost seems mm. like, you know, they are on skates and I don't know how you guys manage it. Like you're managing work, you're managing child, you're managing home, you're managing guests mm -hmm. and you're pretty much managing so many things. And he was like, you should just name it mom on skates because I feel mothers have skates under their feet because mm -hmm. otherwise it's not possible to do so much. So that's how I mean, it did not, it did not take us too much time. We did not think about it. It was almost like, you know, like an idea that he mm -hmm. had. And I was like, okay, this sounds good. Also, it has a good meaning. So let's just go with it. Wonderful. Credit to him as well for the name. Yes. And you mentioned Easy Parenting Hub as a company that you founded recently. Um, what is that all about? And how is it different from the other entities um, of a similar nature? Right. So Easy Parenting Hub is like a digital school for mothers. And uh, mothers can actually come and learn whenever they want. 
right and there are different topics and all these topics are very special the topics that i've covered under easy parenting hub it's special because every topic is answering the questions that mothers have asked me at some point mm. so i've interacted with over 10000 mothers over the last 6 and a half years at right. least so you know based on whatever questions that i've received from them i've put those questions in different buckets and then okay. you know i've actually created programs which are answering those questions because i just feel that it's important to give mothers what they need and not what i have right, right? so it's mm-hmm. not about how much you know it's about how can you help them with the little that you know so because mm-hmm. sometimes when you give them too much you know it might not be the right answer to the problem statement so i right. just feel that my program is very simple and it's very effective it's very actionable so i think that could be uh, one thing that is really helping create that transformation because mm-hmm. it's absolutely uh, there is nothing extra it's very to the point very brief concise and very right. action driven so you know there are like small actionable techniques that i give them and then i tell them that you know do this and see how it help, helps you so let's say if i'm giving 100 200 techniques i feel even if a mother can you know start using 5 to 10 of those techniques she'll definitely see a transformation and the idea mm-hmm. is to keep it very simple and to keep it uh, very actionable so i think that's why uh, mothers are seeing a lot of transformation also there's a, a very high level of accountability that i have in my community which means that i meet my community very frequently oh, at least wonderful. once a week i meet everyone and we do q and a together so i think that's very important because you know just giving them access to the courses is not good enough because uh, parenting is something you know it keeps evolving so your right. challenges also keep changing with time so you know right now like you know a new mom could have problems like you know my baby is not sleeping or maybe mm-hmm. my baby want to eat or how can i stop breastfeeding my baby those could be the problems like right. that a new mom a uh, new new mother might face but like right. a mother who is actually uh, raising a toddler would have different issues like you know how do i prevent my child from hitting others or my child cries a lot when he goes to school so or right. my child is throwing a lot of tantrums so those could be different set of problems and then you know if you have another child along the way then you know sibling rivalry or just siblings fighting with each other mm-hmm. so i feel it's very important that you meet your community and you constantly are available to help them so i feel that is one thing which is also very special about uh, my digital school wonderful i'm going to tell you what drew me to you um so i have two teenagers so i actually didn't chance upon your account uh, based on parenting tips for my teenage boys but what i really loved and what attracted me to your instagram account was your authentic style um and i love the way you con- conveyed messages okay so very straight to the point there is a whole load of um educational content coming through whether it's the five books of parenting we should read or five movies we should watch or it's just beautifully done and that's what really attracted me uh to your account and the second thing is i really love the way you switch between english and hindi so we're dealing with a large array of society we're leading um you know globalized will where we're talking to people in india and i really love the way you switch between um english and hindi uh to convey your messages across so bravo on that vidhi and you. you've spoken about your courses but what are some of the ones that you've believed are um significant and do you think the nature of these courses have changed over the pandemic um do you think the the focus of parenting needs um has changed uh, due to the last two two and a half years of of the pandemic right so i think there was always a need to learn about parenting but i just feel that pandemic gave mothers a lot of time to actually start giving more attention to parenting as a skill that needs to be learned so before that of course the challenges were there but you know there was so much else happening right that you didn't have the time to really focus on this piece but you know when you're with your child 24/7 mm-hmm. then you suddenly feel the need to do more with your child before the pandemic because you're going out you're taking your child out the child is going to the park you don't realize what is actually happening right so right. of course i feel uh, 
that the pandemic did shift a lot of things, but the concepts are the same. The ideas are pretty much the same. And the philosophy that I really follow and believe in and also encourage all my mothers and all the mothers in my tribe to believe in is that the more we work on ourselves, the lesser we have to work on our children. So mm. my programs are not just focused on the children. In fact, I would say there are 70, 70% of it is actually focused on the mothers. Right. And I have 20, 30% focus on the children, you know, how to manage tantrums and all of those things. But I right. think it all really starts with who you are as a mother and how you feel as a mother. So, you know, like managing stress, that is one of my, I think, great uh, course, one, one very important course, which I feel every mother really benefits uh, from, like, you know, how to manage stress. Then what is mindful parenting? What are the different mm. parenting styles? What is your parenting style? Also, you know, small things like, you know, how to discipline your child. So every mother wants to discipline, but mm -hmm. most of us don't know how to do it. So right. then, you know, actually, you know, because if you know better, all of us want to do better for our children. For sure. The problem is that we just don't have access to good information. But once a mother gets access to good information, she does her best and she always tries to do the better thing. And that's how all of us pretty much operate. Once we have access to better information, we want to do the better thing. So mm -hmm. I just feel it's about you believing in yourself and you actually taking that extra effort to mm -hmm. prepare yourself for your child. And this is something that I tell my mothers always that, you know, like when we go for a party, we change our clothes, we get ready. And why do we do that? We do that because right. we want people to respect us. We want people to appreciate us. We want people to acknowledge us. So I just feel that if we can get ready for something as basic as a party, it is so important for us to get ready for our children. Mm -hmm. Because if we get ready for them, they're going to respect us more. They're going to understand us better. Mm -hmm. They're going to connect with us at a more deeper level. So I feel that, you know, easy stress management and there's this thing called effective communication model because I Ooh. feel communication connection is very important of course in parenting but even otherwise because only through communication and connection you can actually create cooperation mm -hmm. and once mm -hmm. you can really work on communicating effectively with your child and work on your connection with your child the cooperation comes through very easily so you right. have to put in very little effort because mostly mothers are struggling for cooperation. That yeah. my child won't listen or my child is going to throw tantrums or my child is very stubborn or my child won't study. So all of this would kind of come under cooperation. But if you are actually effectively communicating and if you are connecting with your child, they're going to do all of this and it's going to be very easy. Of course, you know, sometimes they'll be moody because they're kids and they still mm -hmm. choose not to do it, but mostly they will do it. Wonderful. So this, I feel, is very effective. Also, I have right. some uh, very good products for kids. There's this uh, great product that I have. It's called Easy. It's called Audio Video Flashcards. So the Ooh. idea is to teach your child five new words. Uh -huh. And every video is under two minutes. So it's a series Wonderful. of 60 videos. And every video has five words. And mm -hmm. I also use those words in sentences. So this is something that I do with my son very consistently. Like I used to, like now I try to, but you know, he's growing. So he wants to do it his way. But when he was younger, I used to do it with him. So we used to do five new words. And then we used to put those five words and use them as sentences. Mm -hmm. And it really helps to build your child's vocabulary. And I feel it's very, it's the most important skill to actually have a good vocabulary and to be able to effectively communicate what you're thinking about. And how so, young do we need to start? As an, so I think, when would you, I, I think there is uh, no real, I think you can start as soon as your baby arrives because you can start talking to them. Mm -hmm, you can start mm -hmm. showing them new words. So I used to do it when he was six months, I think. I used to show him right. five flashcards and I used to show him those words. And I used to tell him that, you know, and you can start with very simple sentences that, you know, right. grapes, grapes are green in color and apple mm. is red. Or this is a mm -hmm. red juicy apple. So, you know, right. you're just teaching your child. And, you know, what do you even do with the six month old child? Because, you know, the right. more you speak with them, uh, it's easier for them to actually follow you later. They uh -huh. start to speak sooner. You're also working on their vocabulary. 
but it's very important that you do it from a place of trust and this is a problem that i see and you know mothers ask me very often that you know will my child understand mm -hmm. you know if i'm doing it with a 6 month old child is he actually understanding is she actually following mm -hmm. what i'm saying mm -hmm. and i always tell my mothers that you know our duty is not to actually think whether or not our children are understanding our responsibility as mothers is to actually expose them to good opportunities to good information and to create uh -huh. good experiences for them with right. the belief that they are understanding mm -hmm. because if you are doing it from a place that you know i don't think if my child is understanding or not you'll not be able to do it right because you're always doubt in that zone of doubt where you're thinking okay my child is not understanding let me just yeah, stop yeah yes but yes. if you think that okay i don't care whether or not he's understanding i'm just still going to do it right so i think it becomes a lot easier for you to do it consistently and of course children are always learning wonderful and riti you've mentioned you've got a beautiful community of mothers uh but you're a parenting coach do we have any fathers that come to you for advice so actually i've not um yeah there are fathers so for my one on one i do have fathers when i do those one on one uh, coaching sessions right but for the community i've actually kept it only for mothers in this like for now it's only for mothers maybe you know a few years down the line i might create something for the fathers mm -hmm. but for now you know actually i'm i feel that i personally connect better with the mothers because mm -hmm. i have actually gone through and i can really understand what they are going through so right. i can really connect with them and because some topics you know i cannot create very similar topics for mothers and fathers they are going to be completely different because you know mothers sure. are going through a different set of challenges and sure. fathers are also going through their own problems but those have to be addressed very differently so right, right now i don't have any fathers in my community this it's only exclusively for mothers but uh -huh. for one on sessions i have couples i have children i have only fathers only mothers so i mm -hmm. do it for everyone wonderful and what do you get asked the most in terms of parenting what's some of the most popular questions you get asked about so i think the most popular question which i'm getting asked very recently is that i'm trying my best but i still feel stuck mm. and i think there's one other uh, reason you know because there's so much information on the internet right and you know obviously it's very easy to access all of that information but free information on the internet can definitely help you a lot but sometimes you know it's not complete information right that also you know because let's say you know how to raise a confident child now of course there can be different ideas about how to raise a confident child so let's right. say on social media you might you know share one idea or maximum two ideas because you know that's the nature you don't want to make it very long format when you are creating content on instagram or anything youtube right. of course you know because that's not even a social media that's like you know like search engine so there right. you will get long format content but on social media you get like you know one tip or two ideas mm -hmm. and then what happens is the mother goes and she tries this idea and it doesn't work for her and then she either doubts the person who's sharing the information mm. or she doubt her parenting skills that you know i'm not good enough i'm not being able to do this properly right so one question that i get asked a lot recently is that i'm trying my best but i still feel stuck mm -hmm. and the reason is that you know mothers are really trying right now because you know before the pandemic i think it was just happening Right. they didn't know what is happening and you know they were just raising their children without realizing the need to learn but now the thing is that now they are learning and when they are learning and implementing and even after that when they don't see results mm -hmm. they feel that there is something wrong right exactly. and one reason is because they are not they are learning from social media so mm -hmm. social media can really help you in a lot of ways but it can also create some problem somewhere because you're not getting full information on social media you'll get one mm. idea two ideas so let's say you know if i want to raise a confident child if a mother wants to raise a confident child and she sees a video on instagram on how to raise a confident child and she gets one idea or two ideas and she goes and tries it out and it doesn't work for her so she is either going to doubt the creator who is actually shared the content piece or she's going to doubt her parenting skills or she right. feel that there is something wrong with her child Mm -hmm. so i just feel that it's very important that you get access to the full recipe 
not right. just to you know one or two steps of the whole recipe because our children come with their own predisposition they have their own temperament so mm-hmm. any problem statement in parenting will have multiple solutions and right. then you as a parent have to go and try those different things and then one or two things out of those different things that you try might work out for you right. but there is a possibility that those first two things might not work but the other two okay. things might work. But Definitely. sometimes, you know, we just get stuck with those first two ideas and we start doubting ourselves. So I feel that as mothers and as parents, the intention is always to do our best. Now, the next rational step to take after you have set that intention is to actually learn the better way to do it. Mm. So I think there, I think structured information really helps because you need mm-hmm. access to the full uh recipe and not just one or two steps so set the intention the intention I feel is pretty much set for all parents because as parents we always want to do the best for our child but of course you know the approach has to be correct and it has to be right and Mm -hmm. uh, in our head we are always feeling that we are doing the right thing but sometimes you know because most of our parenting is based on observation Mm -hmm. based on what we have learned as children So it's very, but it's not like scientific. It's not like backed empirically. So it's very important that you get access to structured information so that you can really see the transformation and you can see your journey as a parent get a lot easier and a lot more enriching. Wonderful. And Riddhi, earlier you mentioned that uh, 70% of uh, the focus or the courses are actually based on um, generating uh, material or content for mothers and uh, how essential is it for us to prioritize ourselves as mothers and is there anything like being a super mom do we really need to be a super mom right so honestly I feel that it is so important for us to take care of our energy because the mother's energy I think decides the energy in the house So it's so important because, you know, if a mother is not feeling good, if she's not feeling happy, if she's not feeling well taken care of, Mm -hmm. the child is going to feel the same. Because mostly, especially in India, at least, mother Mm -hmm. is the primary caregiver. Right. The child is mostly with the mother because, of Mm -hmm. course, you know, the dynamics are changing. Mothers have started to work and fathers have also started to help a lot with children. And it's actually, you know, the roles are converging. Right. earlier you know when I was small it was mostly like you know the father is the bread earner and mother is taking care of all the household chores and of the kids and everything but now I think the roles are converging mm-hmm. but still I think uh, the burden is mostly on the mother or responsibility I would like to use the word responsibility the responsibility is more on the mother so it's very important that you know she feels good and it's also very important for mothers to indicate that they have a life outside of the child like you know Mm -hmm. it's very important that you know we do not confuse our lives with their lives it's Mm. very important to understand that we have our lives to take care of and we are here to sort of protect and provide for our children so mostly as mothers we're gardeners and this is a story that I use a lot and I tell mothers that you know supposing God comes down and gives you a seed Uh and God tells you to take care of the seed what can we do we can right. just put it in like good quality soil, give it good quality water, prevent it from insects and pests and make sure that it's getting good sunlight. Right. But we cannot decide how long it's going to be the plant, whether it's going to be a long plant or a short plant, or it's going to have big leaves or small leaves, whether it's going to be a flowering plant or it's going to bear fruits. We cannot decide all of this in advance. So mm-hmm. it's very important that we do our best without really worrying about what the end result is going to be. Right. That is very important. So if you're doing everything right, the result will automatically be right. So the focus should be on the response and your action and not on the result. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think this really makes it very simple because you're just taking one day at a time. You're right. relaxing also. You're having some fun time and you're also being with your child. So right. that really helps. And that's why, you know, I have so many things which are focused only on mothers, like, you know, mindful parenting, Uh, stress management, effective communication, self-care plan, how to raise yourself financially, you know, because Mm. that is also, you know, pregnancy Mm. weight management, because sometimes weight can 
really cause you know uh, low self esteem so totally see weight management so all of those things are focused on because if the mother feels right the child will automatically start to feel good wonderful yeah. but if the mother yeah. is not feeling good or she's feeling low in energy low on energy it's very difficult for her to engage the child because parenting requires a lot of energy because right. it's you have to do a lot when you become a mother so you will need some energy so it's very important that you have some alone time and you do a few things just for yourself during the day so i tell mothers that you know just imagine you have 23 hours and one hour is just for you Excellent. so just imagine that god has designed days that are only uh, having 23 hours and then what uh-huh. would you do so just right. uh, you know block one hour for yourself every day Excellent, Riddhi. That's great advice. And before I say goodbye to you, what would you like to see manifest or materialize in the near future for you, for your company, around you? Right. So to be honest, I don't think too much about what I will do in the future because I just take one day at a time. But the mission that I'm living right now is that you know I really want to help hundred thousand mothers become confident, creative, and courageous. and every single day i wake up with this idea and i go to bed with this idea that you know i really want to do this and then i take two three action steps to achieve the same and of course you know i just feel that as mothers it's so important that you know we love ourselves we appreciate ourselves for the work that we do and to not really treat parenting as you know something uh, like a don't not to treat parenting as a burden but to mm-hmm. treat it as a part of your life because this is that part of your life which you cannot delete or it's not ending anytime soon so it's very important mm-hmm. that you grow into it and you start enjoying the whole process because uh, it's more about of course you have to do everything you have to do the better thing but you also need to enjoy parenting so right now i feel what's happening is we are really trying to do everything right 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 mm-hmm. and in this uh, process of doing everything right we are actually forgetting to really enjoy parenting so i think i've actually answered the wrong question here but no, yeah, you did it really beautifully just uh, what i really want to achieve in the next few years is probably reach out to more mothers and uh-huh. more and more mothers and probably like 100000 mothers and then you know reset my goal to a higher number wonderful riti it's been such a pleasure talking to you today i've really enjoyed our conversation and i'm wishing you all the very very best may you keep growing may you keep sharing your authentic voice thank you so much manisha it was a pleasure being here thank you take care riti yes you too bye